welcome to this video. We're gonna be talking about all things Pride and Prejudice, okay? I've been having so much fun reading, thinking about, talking about Bridgerton related things for the past few weeks. From that, I have rediscovered my love of Jane Austen. So today we are gonna go over all things Pride and Prejudice, the classic enemies to lovers, and I'm gonna be giving you some recommendations of movies, YouTube videos, books that are all related to Pride and Prejudice. Okay, we're gonna get started off with a bang, with the question, the debate. What's better, the BBC series of Pride and Prejudice or the 2005 movie? That's the question, right? I used to be in the party of the BBC limited series is far superior because it has all of the details. I've since then done some character growth and here's my answer now. They are both good. They are both really great. I love both of them for different reasons. They are different. The BBC series is a series. It is six hours long. It has more time to dedicate to the nitty gritty details. In a movie, you've got two hours. You've got to pick the highlights. You've got to make sure that the main themes are still conveyed and just focus on how to convey those themes in two hours. There might be some little details that are left out and that's okay. It's a movie. That's what happens when you adapt a book into a movie. The movie is really great, I think. Just the way it was made, you can tell that there was so much tension to the details of it. The cinematography is stunning. The mu music is gorgeous. The color, the design, the look of it is so beautiful. I love the movie for that reason. The BBC series, it's a TV series from the 90s. It's, <laughs> they were doing the best with what they had available to them, but their budget was a lot smaller than the movie budget. I love the casting specifically of Lizzie Bennet and Mr. Darcy in the BBC series. Nobody can beat Colin Firth as Mr. Darcy. Colin Firth is a better Mr. Darcy in my opinion. I love Keira Knightley. I love the casting of Jane Bennet, of Mr. Bennet. Like there are a lot of characters and casting choices that they made in the movie that I love, but I'm sorry, nobody beats Colin Firth as Mr. Darcy. So those are my thoughts on the BBC <laughs> series from the 90s and the 2005 movie. They are different things. I like them both. I like them both and they're both really great. So what's your take on the BBC versus 2005 Pride and Prejudice movie debate? Do you have a preference? If you do, why? Comment that below. If you're a fan of the 2005 movie and you're craving a watch of the 2005 movie but you don't have the time for it, you're a busy person, you've got lots of things going on, may I suggest watching Rachel Maxey's YouTube video where she edits herself into key scenes from that movie? I'll have it linked somewhere. It is. I love it. So go check it out. It is funny but you still get, you still get that 2005 Pride and Prejudice feel. Another suggestion that I have for you, if you are a busy person, you only got a few minutes here and there, the web series, Lizzie Bennet Diaries here on YouTube. There are a hundred episodes. Each episode is two to five minutes long and it's just little bite-sized pieces of the Pride and Prejudice story. And if you put it all together, it tells the whole story of Pride and Prejudice, but in like a modern day setting, it is so good. So, so good. I remember watching this when it first came out and being obsessed with it. If I'm being honest, this is what got me into Pride and Prejudice. This is the reason I picked up the book. Another modern day or like more modern take on Pride and Prejudice is a BBC made for TV movie called Lost in Austin. In this movie, we have our main character, Amanda Price. She is from modern day, 21st century, and she loves Pride and Prejudice. She's feeling kind of unsatisfied in life, in her relationship, and one day she finds like a doorway in her flat in her apartment that she's never noticed before, and she walks through it and finds herself in Longbourn, then she's not able to get out. She has basically replaced Lizzie Bennet. She and Lizzie Bennet have somehow just swapped places, and she is now in the middle of Pride and Prejudice while Lizzie is living in the 2010s. This movie focuses mostly on Amanda and her experience just falling into the middle of Pride and Prejudice and navigating Regency England and Regency customs and balls and things like that. So that concludes the movie slash video media portion of my Pride and Prejudice recommendations. Now we're moving on to some Pride and Prejudice related books. First book on this list is called Most Ardently and it is a gay and queer retelling of Pride and Prejudice. If you've ever wanted to read Pride and Prejudice but where the characters are gay, 
go check out most ardently. Next is called Longborn. I just finished reading this book and I really enjoyed it. This book is about the servants that work in the Bennett household and so it's their take on what's happening with the Bennett sisters, kind of like what they think of all of that, as well as just like what's happening in their own lives. There's a little bit of drama with a new a new footman that joins the household. Kind of his background kind of leads to some drama and some tension. There is some romance in this book. It is fun. It is it feels it feels a lot like the way Pride and Prejudice is written. Just that it's kind of slow. Yes, there is a romance in it, and if you're reading it for that, that's great, but there's also a lot more to it. There's a lot about the lives of these servants, and so you really get like a feel for like what it was like for these people in this completely different situation from, you know, the Bennett situation. It's really interesting just to kind of have that same focus on just the lifestyle, like in Pride and Prejudice, but for a whole different class of people. That's Longborn. I would highly recommend it. Next is called The Other Bennett Sister. This is a book all about Mary Bennett, who if you're familiar with Pride and Prejudice, you know she's kind of quiet, kind of awkward. She goes unnoticed a lot of the time in the Pride and Prejudice book, but this is her story. We're really just focusing on Mary in this book and we see her come into her own. I'm looking forward to reading this because I do like quieter characters, wallflower characters, and so I think it would be a lot of fun to see Mary be is the center of attention and see what that's like, see what story she has to tell. The last book and last recommendation in this video is called The Scandalous Confessions of Lydia Bennett Witch. So <laughs> if you can't tell by that title, this is a little bit more of a fantasy take on Pride and Prejudice as well as being told from Lydia's point of view. Lydia is the youngest of the Bennett sisters in spoilers if you're not familiar with Pride and Prejudice. She gets married under kind of scandalous circumstances and so this is her side of that story with a little bit of magic thrown into it. It is described as a sparkling witchy reimagining of Pride and Prejudice. I think this is a good book for anybody to read if you like Pride and Prejudice but you also like a little bit of magic, a little bit of whimsy. I think this is the book for you. I've just remembered another book <laughs> and another movie that you can read and then watch if you like Pride and Prejudice but you like kind of a fantastical twist on it and that is Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. I have not read the book. I imagine it's very similar to the movie which I have seen and it is just absurd <laughs> and ridiculous but such a fun time. I love Lily James. I think she kills it as Lizzie Bennet in Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. And yeah, just the whole zombie addition to Pride and Prejudice just <laughs> makes for a very campy, absurd time. And yeah, if you're into that kind of vibe, highly recommend Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Okay, okay friends, those are all of the recommendations I have for you if you like Pride and Prejudice and you just want more Pride and Prejudice in your life. If you want more recommendations just like these, but for other Jane Austen books, please comment down below. Yes or no, should I make that video? Do you wanna hear about Emma recommendations or Northanger Abbey and Sense and Sensibility? Like, do you wanna know about those? Let me know in the comments. With all that said, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for listening to me ramble about Jane Austen, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.